There we go. Might be helpful. church and welcome to worship on this the fifth sunday in our continuing celebration of easter it is good to be gathered together in worship on this day welcome to those of us participating on youtube your bulletin is of course available uh, for download from the link in the weekly email and in your own space you are welcome to sing or hum along with the music while those of us here in the sanctuary will continue to refrain from singing or humming in our continued care for one another. Welcome, whether you are joining us on the live stream or worshiping with us at a later date or time. In anticipation of Holy Communion later in this service, those online will want to have your communion elements, the fruit of the vine to drink, and any form of bread or cracker at the ready if you plan to participate with us in Christ's Holy Supper. Welcome to those of us here in the pews. Thank you for continuing to wear your masks everywhere in this building as a concrete act of love for the medically vulnerable among us. Uh, shawls are available here if you haven't grabbed one already uh, since the pump on our furnace is not pumping the heat up to us. Uh, you might need a shawl uh, in our chilly sanctuary this morning. And uh, we will pray for the health of our furnace and its pumps. Uh, thank you for filling out the yellow slip in your bulletin. If you have a name to add to the prayers later in the service, you can uh, get that uh, sheet to Chris. 
Uh, otherwise, you can simply leave the yellow slip in the pew and the ushers will collect those after worship. Both the offering plate here and our website, trinitylutheraneverett.com, are available to receive your offering today. You're invited to place your offering uh, anytime during or after worship. And now I'll call on Karin to share a bit about our music this morning. Good morning. So for uh, Sunday a couple weeks ago, our theme was kind of the Spanish language uh, hymns that were available to us as we celebrated that particular Sunday in the Easter tide, the Easter season. Today, I'm going to stay up on the pipe organ um, because there's a lot of interesting things that happen, even with hymns of many different ages. We have a tune that was written back probably in the late 1700s. We've got a tune that was probably written 20 years ago. So to be able to juxtapose them together all on the same instrument and realize that there's this thread that kind of holds them together feels powerful on a day when we're going to be examining Jesus' call to us to love one another and how much that community spans space and time. So today, all of the music will be up on the pipe organ, and I think that'll be a treat. We'll enjoy that together. Excellent. Thank you. So together, online, and in person, we are united as one worshiping community called together by God for ministry in this place and time. And with those hospitality announcements complete, please arise in the way that you are able for the Thanksgiving for baptism found in your bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. Alleluia, we are a new creation in Christ. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. For your river of life, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. In our baptismal waters, you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. For your powerful waters, we thank you, God. Alleluia. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. For the movement of your waters, we thank you, God. Alleluia. Now rain upon your church once more. Make clear your claim on us as your beloved and holy people. Open the channels of our hearts. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We pray together the prayer of the day found in your bulletin. O oh Lord God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit, we may know goodness and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And you may be seated. Good morning. Oops. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> the first reading is from Acts 
chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. The apostles and the brothers and sisters throughout Judea heard that even the Gentiles had welcomed God's word. When Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him. They accused him. He went into the home of the uncircumcised and ate with them. Step by step, Peter explained what had happened. It was in the city of Joppa. I was in the city of Joppa praying when I had a visionary experience. In my vision, I saw something like a large linen sheet being lowered from heaven by its four corners. It came all the way down to me. As I stared at it, wondering what it was, I saw four-legged animals, including wild beasts, as well as reptiles and wild birds. I heard the voice say, get up, Peter, eat, kill and eat. I responded, absolutely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice of heaven spoke a second time. Never consider unclean what God has made pure. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled back into heaven. At that moment, three men who were sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were staying. The Spirit told me to go with them even though they were Gentiles. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He reported to us how he had seen an angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and summon Simon, known, who is known as Peter. He will tell you how you and your entire household can be saved. When I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as the Spirit fell on us in the beginning. I remembered the Lord's words. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If God gave them the same gift he gave us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then who am I? Could I stand in God's way? Once the apostles and the other believers heard this, they calmed down. They praised God and concluded, so then God was in a, so God has enabled Gentiles to change their hearts and live so they may have new life. Please read the psalm responsibly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord, all you angels. Sing, sing praise, praise, all you hosts of heaven. heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise, praise the Lord, Lord heaven, heaven and heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created, who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all depths, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind, doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all people, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are here to the Lord. Alleluia. The second reading is from Revelations 21, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the former heaven and former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God made ready as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling is here with humankind. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. There will be no mourning, crying, or pain anymore, for the formal things have passed away. Then the one seating on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. He also said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, 
all is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will freely give water from the life-giving spring. Please arise in the way that you are able to greet the gospel. Alleluia. Jesus says, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I'm with you for a little while longer. You will look for me, but just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now, where I'm going, you can't come. I give you a new commandment, love each other. Just as I have loved you, so you must also love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Once the apostles and other believers heard this, they calmed down. They praised God and concluded, so then God has enabled Gentiles to change their hearts and lives so that they might have new life. I have been crying more than usual lately. To be honest, any amount of crying on my part is more crying than usual, except in worship, you have certainly witnessed me getting choked up more than a few times here in this sanctuary. But the source of my tears of late is a TV show that I did not expect to move me so deeply. I thought I was picking a light and fluffy show, something to entertain me while I ate my dinner or to decompress after a long day of Zoom meetings. We're here is a show about three drag queens who travel the country and teach amateurs how to put on a one night only drag performance in towns and small cities throughout the United States. I expected flashy costumes, peppy music, maybe some challenges with learning and implementing choreography. That's what I was expecting. What I was not expecting was to be so deeply moved as moved at the joy of people finding, I got to do that whole sentence again. <laughs> what I did was not expecting was to be so deeply touched at the joy people find in casting off deep seated shame in the love that multiplies when community is formed where there was previously loneliness and isolation, at the triumph in people transforming their fears into courage. Over and over, this show would tap into my memories of growing up gay in a small town, and my eyes would well up with tears. For example, in the last episode of the second season, seated at their kitchen table in Grand Junction, Colorado, a mother is telling Bob the Drag Queen, yes, that is her professional name, Bob the Drag Queen, about when her child told her that he was transitioning to live his life as a man. The mother already knew the challenges ahead for her child based on his medical diagnosis of cystic fibrosis, which required him to use a motorized wheelchair for his mobility. With the revelation of his transgender identity, the mother did not receive this declaration as good news. 
She could only envision the challenges. I know my own parents, when I came out to them as gay way back in 1994, did not receive my declaration as good news. They only envisioned the challenges. The apostles and the brothers and sisters throughout Judea heard that even the Gentiles had welcomed God's word. We heard in verse one of our reading from Acts this morning. Because we are all inheritors of this expansion of the early Christian community to include Gentile believers, we, of course, hear this verse as good news. The Spirit was on the move and was reaching outside the boundaries of the specific geographical and cultural origins of the initial disciples of Jesus. There must have been great rejoicing when this expansive news reached Jerusalem, right? When Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him. They accused him. You went into the home of the uncircumcised and ate with them. So no, it was not initially received as good news. And why were the believers in Jerusalem so upset? Because Peter was breaking the rules. He was violating boundaries that had been understood to have been established by God directly. He entered a Gentile home, a space that was understood to corrupt his ability to worship God. His table fellowship with those who did not follow the same rules as Peter meant that Peter's own body would now be a corrupting influence within his own community. And part of the problem, I think, is that the changes Peter was making were done outside of the ability of his own community to discern and observe along with Peter. Peter alone had a vision and with a small group from Joppa, followed where the spirit was leading. However, the rest of the community back in Jerusalem had to hear about what Peter had done second or maybe even third hand. They weren't in the same context as Peter anymore. And this story of what happened in Caesarea was certainly not reported by others in the same way that Peter would tell the story. Those in Jerusalem initially were told Peter entered the home of someone ritually unclean and took their food into his body. That's the gist of the story that got transmitted. There is no hint of good news in that report. And so Peter has to pull back. He gives a step-by-step -step recap of how things developed and how he was praying when he received a vision that at first seemed more like a temptation. Get up, kill, and eat. But in the repetition of the message, never consider unclean what God has made pure. Peter came to understand this as a message from the Lord. And that interpretation immediately required a real world application when guests arrived to meet him. Peter assures his listeners in Jerusalem that it was the spirit who commanded that he go with these men. And Peter's vision was matched by Cornelius's report of his own vision, which caused him to send for Peter. And then in a connection to the Pentecost day experience where the spirit made itself known among the gathered disciples in a most dramatic fashion, Peter experienced this same evidence of the spirit moving among Cornelius and his household, even before Peter can finish his speech to them. After explaining the evidence of the spirit he saw among this Gentile household, Peter concludes his defense to the Jerusalem believers 
asking, who am I? Could I stand in God's way? And the hearts of the Jerusalem community are moved. Hearing Peter's telling of the background to that report, which at first had seemed so troubling, the community is convinced. They praised God and concluded, so then God has enabled Gentiles to change their hearts and lives so that they might have new life. Time to celebrate, crisis averted. This divided community of followers of Christ is now fully united and they live happily ever after the end. At least that's how it sound, may sound when we stop the story at chapter 11, verse 18. But that unity of understanding, that agreement of what God was doing in the world was short-lived. Because just acknowledging that the Holy Spirit was inviting both Jews and Gentiles into this new community of followers of Jesus Christ didn't answer all of the questions about how a community of followers of Jesus Christ could include both Jewish and Gentile believers. Whose rules would be followed and whom and by whom? Did all of the men need to be circumcised? If so, why? If not, why not? Were the dietary rules still important? What about their access to the synagogue? Should they keep trying to maintain that relationship? These were not small questions and not everyone had the same answers. Which is how it came to be that the gathering of believers in the city of Antioch, a mixed community of Jewish and Gentile converts to being followers of Jesus Christ, were later visited by a delegation from Jerusalem telling the men of Antioch that their baptism was not enough if they weren't willing to become circumcised as well, creating a rift and confusion within the Antioch community. The peace was broken by the demands of this delegation and yet another council was called in Acts chapter 15 to reconsider how this fractured community could once again be brought together. Being in community together can be hard and persistent work. Just as I have loved you, so you must also love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you love each other, we heard Jesus say. But that seems easier said than done. We can affirm the concept of loving one another far more easily than we can figure out what loving one another looks like in practice. And we can see just how challenging that was for the earliest of the Christian communities to learn how to love one another across their differences. We, as the worshiping community of Trinity Lutheran Church, have been wrestling with our own challenges in how to follow this command. One of the things seeking to love one another as Jesus has loved us has meant here is centering the needs of the most medically vulnerable among us as we make decisions about how to structure our worship and our fellowship and our acts of service during the pandemic. We've enacted and maintained high risk mitigation procedures as a concrete way of living out this commitment to loving one another, recognizing that we do not all share the same vulnerabilities equally. And so we have chosen to take on additional restrictions together so that we can more equally participate in the life of this congregation. And these decisions haven't always been received as good news. 
It's a challenge to see the good news in all the things that we have given up, in all of the restrictions we hold ourselves to. These changes have rarely immediately felt like good news arriving. As we have had to pivot and adjust along the way, I'm sure that there are changes that have arrived as a surprise, leaving many of you with questions about how and why certain decisions were made, wondering where the evidence might be that the Holy Spirit has been involved in this process. You may wonder if this community's love still includes you. We may also find ourselves hoping that we will soon be living in a post-COVID world, or at least in a world where COVID is no more of a concern than the common cold. But we aren't there yet. As yet another variant shows itself in our rising infection rates and rising hospitalization rates. And so the call to love one another continues right here, right now. Not waiting for a more opportune time to love one another, not waiting until we have all the answers, not waiting for a return to what we once knew. Our call is to discern together how we can practice Christ's call to love one another right here in the circumstances with which we find ourselves with all of the diversities we represent and all of the diversities in the community around us. Perhaps today, the Holy Spirit is inviting us to see the good news in being a community that is prepared to welcome people of multiple states of health and vulnerability. Can we center our own reactions in love toward the most vulnerable among us? Can we see the gift in being a community where all who wish to worship in, present, in person can choose to do so because of the structures that we have in place? And the gift in those who continue to need to, an online option being fully included as well. Can we see the gift in the variety of tools that we have to keep our connections with one another, even in the midst of the present challenges? And can we be bold enough to proclaim that gift to those in need of a community like ours, a community that refuses to count anyone as expendable? Can we love one another by inviting others to participate in this particular way of loving one another? Then the one seated on the throne said, look, I am making all things new. He also said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true we heard in the reading from Revelation. Even now, we trust that Christ continues to make all things new. Perhaps in these days, we are being led into new ways of being the church, new ways of experiencing worship, new ways of service, of fellowship, new ways of of love. As we will hear in our hymn of the day, beloved, God's chosen, put on as a garment compassion, forgiveness, and goodness of heart. Above all, before all, let love be your raiment that binds into one every dissonant part. May it be so. Amen.
it is time to share some opportunities with you. Uh, one of the resources that we have for keeping in fellowship with one another and with the Holy Spirit is our virtual coffee hour. So uh, that will be uh, as usual today at noon on Zoom. So if you haven't participated in one or if we haven't seen you at coffee hour for a while, I invite you uh, to join us. If you need the link, uh, you can send me an email, pastor at trinitylutheraneverett.com, and I'll be happy to get that link to you. I invite your prayers for our council this week as we meet on Tuesday evening. And our Bible study is our adult, our adult Bible study is back to our usual 1115 time this week. And then we will wrap up for the season the following Wednesday. Our Jazz Vespers continues on Wednesdays at 830 on YouTube Live. If you uh, checked out a copy of Holden Evening Prayer for our Lenten uh, Wednesday series, uh, you're invited to return that uh, to me or to the church office, or you can just uh, slip it in the mail slot and uh, Tanya will collect those. The Trinity Aid Bank continues on Fridays, opening at 1030 and closing at 1230. Because it continues to be such a cold spring, we still need warm things along with the food donations. And uh, this week in particular, we ran low on canned fruit. So uh, as you're making your shopping choices, if you want to keep a uh, tab in mind in that way, that would be great. Uh, we also need your plastic bags. So uh, thank you in advance for those donations as well, uh, especially the thick plastic uh, that um, the store is used now. In a glimmer of good news, the rate of increase in our county's COVID infection rate has slowed a bit this week, but it is unfor unfortunately still on the increase. And so we continue our strong risk mitigation procedures, which are in place. That means that when it is time for communion, I will come from the back of the sanctuary with the individual communion kits, which contain a wafer and grape juice. And I noticed uh, the little uh, purple ones that we have now uh, have a little tendency to do some spitting as uh, you open them. So you might wanna have a napkin or a tissue at the ready. Um, there are also kits with a gluten-free wafer if that is your need. So I'll invite you to uh, grab enough for your pew and uh, pass one to your neighbor if necessary. While our county and COVID infection rate continues to climb, we ask that you hold on to your communion kit until you are outside to open and consume that so that you can continue to keep your mask on as an added layer of care for one another. While distribution is happening here in the sanctuary, our online folk are welcome to commune at that time. Or you can request a pastoral home visit in order to receive communion that way. Having been reminded of some of the ways that Christ is inviting us into ministry and fellowship, we're ready to continue our Easter journey. Please arise in the way that you are able. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, for people in need, and for all of creation. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires, as the church cares for one another. Open us to perceive our, your gifts in those we ex least expect. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us. Urge us towards more deliberate care of this world you, may, you have made. God, in your mercy, 
receive our prayer. Humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Hasten to dwell among those who are in pain or distress. As Christ enters our deepest suffering, remain with those experience, experiencing despair and great need. Especially, we pray for Kyle, Barb, Jason, Fran, Lester, Ron, the congregations of the Western Episcopal District of the AME Zion Domination denomination, and their current and former bishops, Bishop Thompson, Crenshaw, and Powell. We also pray for Lisa, Dan, Deanne, Ross, Duane, Maria, and Lucia, Corinne, Anthony, Judy, Marcia, for protection, comfort, and strength for the people of Ukraine for wisdom, compassion, and courage for political and military leaders, that their peace may flourish. We all, those who grieve, especially the family of Jenny Metz, Walter Dewey, for those listed in our bulletin who are unable to attend worship, we pray for those who we name in our hearts, on our lips, and in the chat at this time. We pray for the victims of the shootings in Buffalo, New York. Please give comfort and peace to the victims, families, and community. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Give us a place in the diverse company of your beloved saints. Teach us the value of each person's identity and bless us with a shared identity as your children. Kindred of Christ, God, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our litany of peace is found in your bulletin. Just as Christ Jesus has loved you, God, help us to love one another. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you, with me, and with all the children of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, and with angels, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending chant. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Amen, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, how are we your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done. You may be seated. may remain seated as we pray. Holy God, Holy One, your Son prayed that your people may be one. May the gift of this sacrament in its many forms and many locations be a power for uniting us as your one body. Bless your people through this meal wherever renewal and strength is needed. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Receive the blessing. 
God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. Thank you.